want you to close your eyes and imagine waking up one morning, getting ready to start your day, when suddenly you realize something is weird. It's too quiet outside. You can't hear anyone walking or talking. You don't hear any cars. You leave your house and you go to the main street, let's say Shadok University, and still you don't see anyone. The cafes are empty, the streets are empty, the classrooms are empty. How would you feel? You can open your eyes now. That's a bit scary, isn't it? For people who experience loneliness, this scary scenario is part of everyday lives. Even though they are surrounded by people, they feel socially isolated and alone. They feel like they don't have anyone to turn to for support. In 1985, about 10% of Americans felt that way. They had no one to turn to for support. Two decades later, in 2004, that number nearly tripled. And now 25%, or one out of four Americans, reported having no close friends. We see these increases in loneliness and shrinking of social networks across all developed nations. In the United Kingdom, for instance, the problem of loneliness is so profound that they appointed a minister to deal with it. This is Tracy Elizabeth Crouch, the Minister of Loneliness in the British Parliament. Yes, there is such a job. She's in charge of making the British friendlier. <laughs> My God. Good luck. <laughs> So why should governments care about reducing loneliness and social isolation? Why should we? The reason is very simple. Loneliness is a killer. Loneliness has the same impact on our health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, which tells you a little bit about how much social connection is vital for our physiology. And when scientists began to try to figure out what is it about loneliness that's killing us, they uncovered an interesting fact. Lonely individuals don't get good sleep. They wake up more times during the night, and they report feeling less refreshed in the morning. And we see this interesting connection between social isolation and sleep in other social species as well. For instance, if you isolate a fruit fly from its group, it spends more time awake, less time in sleep, and also suffers from a lot of the health, poor health consequences that is the result of sleep deprivation. We also see these effects in mice and in ants. In fact, when you isolate an ant from its group, it lives for only about six days before it dies of exhaustion. That is 90% less life than an ant that lives in a group. As a sleep researcher, I was really fascinated by this link between social connection and sleep. How can something we do completely alone in our bed reflect something about the way we feel towards others when we're awake? I wanted to know more about this connection, and specifically, I wanted to know, is it not just that we need a sense of social connection to allow for a good night of sleep, but it, is it also true that we need a good night of sleep to allow for a sense of social connection? Is there a bi-directional relationship happening here? So to answer this question, we did a few studies here in Berkeley. I want to tell you about one of them. We asked 18 participants, usually undergrads, because they would do anything as long as you pay them, <laughs> uh, we, we told them, come up to the lab. They were either allowed to sleep for, for a whole night, or we asked them to stay awake for the whole night with us. It's pretty miserable for everyone. <laughs> so a whole night of sleep deprivation. We then wanted to assess their sense of social connection. And we used a task called the social distance task. In this task, experimenters like here in black and participants in blue face each other, and we ask the participants to walk toward the experimenters and tell us how close or far they want others to be. So if they're interested in social connections, they let others come in close. If they're less interested, they ask others to stay further back. We also created a digital version of this task so we can use it in a functional MRI, which now obviously you know how it works. <laughs> So here is an example of the videos we had shown to our participants, so we can look at brain responses to social approach. We filmed men and women walking up towards the camera. <laughs> did you feel the need to just take a step back? And lastly, we also did an interview with our participants in both sleep-rested and sleep-deprived conditions. Let me show you, hopefully it works, a little... Think about social media. 
Oh, I don't really think much about it. I have a Twitter, a Facebook, um, a Tumblr, a Reddit account. Yeah, I, I guess I don't have a Twitter. Did I just say I have a Twitter? I don't have a Twitter. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I, I don't really think much of it. Um. So just a show of hands, who thinks this person had a night of sleep before the interview? <laughs> ah, it's unanimous. So who thinks she did not sleep before the interview? All right, stay tuned. I'll tell you the results in a bit. So what did we find? We found that after sleep, participants allowed others to come in close, but after sleep deprivation, they stopped others farther away. In fact, 18 to 60% farther back than the distance they allowed them to approach when they were sleep rested. In the brain, we focused on regions that are important for social approach. They continuously monitor the space around us, what we call personal space, and they sent out a warning signal whenever something comes too close. So we found that after sleep deprivation, activity in, the, in this network soared. It was much more active. So anything that would come towards us would feel more threatening. To make things worse, another network we looked at that is supposed to promote social understanding and communication was in fact shut down without sleep. So sleep deprivation had a bidirectional impact pushing us away from each other. So, so far I've shown you that the sleep deprived individual is less interested in social connection. But what does it say about the, others, the other people that want to interact with them? Do they care if you have slept or not? So to answer this question, we use the videos that I've shown you and we put them online. We asked more than 1,000 people to tell us what they think about our participants. We never mentioned sleep. They didn't know that some were sleep deprived and some were not. We just said, watch the videos and tell us what you think. So after analysis, we found that our participants, that our raters found participants lonelier if they were sleep deprived. They also indicated they are less interested to socially interact or collaborate with them. And perhaps more surprisingly, the raters themselves reported feeling lonelier after watching a sleep deprived participant. <laughs> So the loneliness coming from sleep deprivation can be like the flu, it can be viral and it can affect you and spread towards you, spreading social isolation. So now for the results of our survey, are you ready? I'll show you the second clip of our lovely subject. Uh, what do you think about space exploration and the search for extraterrestrial intelligence? But what do I think about space as exploration and... Um, the search for and the search for extraterrestrial extraterrestrial lives. Um, oh yeah, no, I for sure think a lot about that constantly. Um, <laughs> I um, I I'm sorry. I believe in aliens, and for sure, I think that um, if we. Um, continue to try. I think space, ugh, space exploration is important, for sure. Well, sleep deprivation, kids. Don't try this at home. <laughs> so the first video we saw was actually after a night of sleep, and this is after a night of sleep deprivation. So to conclude, I hopefully shown you that social connection and sleep share a bi-directional relationship, they affect each other, they affect how we feel towards ourselves and how others feel toward us. How do we break this cycle? We allow for more sleep in our lives, at least eight hours a night for young people like you. Even if it means we might miss out going out with our friends from time to time, they will thank you for not spreading your loneliness to them. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful.